Hello, Jake. Welcome, welcome to the Dark Grass Podcast. It's very nice to be here. I'm really happy to talk to you and that you're so easily accessible. Yeah, yeah. I'm, not, I'm never busy or anything at all. <laughs> no, you're, a busy, you're, you're a busy guy, but you'll, for whatever reason, take an hour for me, and it's not that hard for me to ask. It's not that hard to take an hour. Yeah, last time I asked was, uh, I mean, technically a week ago, but I mean, what, a year ago? Yeah. I was, or a year and a half ago. A year ago, and a half ago is when we started all that. I called you for the D-pad press show. Yeah, you had fun on there, though, because yeah. it, um, it was like just... We all had fun. We we ordered dinner every Saturday. We had meetings. We did everything. I don't know. It was, we hung out and just recorded shows. Played video games. Yeah. That was one time we played Injustice Two for like three hours oh, <laughs> instead dude. of recording. And uh, and Towerfall. <laughs> yeah. My my personal fave. I love me some Towerfall. Carissa adores that game. Yeah, Asher loves that, it too. That's her favorite. She's the only person I've ever met that played single player Towerfall. So when you play video games, first question. What like where's your brain with goals? Like how do you approach a game? Do you want to complete it? Do you want to uh, uh, just get as much story as possible? Like really depends on the game. Yeah, I take it kind of game by game. Like if you were to generalize though, like completionist is a type. Like are you more casual? Certain as far games as... I like to complete. Okay. Games I really enjoy. Like if I'm like halfway through it and I'm really enjoying the story and just the gameplay loop, then I'll look at the trophy list and be like. Uh, okay, yeah, I can platinum this. Like, with Horizon yeah. Zero Dawn, I was about halfway through Horizon and was like, oh, yeah, I'm totally going to platinum this. You yeah. Know? And the Uncharted games, I like to complete like that. Um, with a lot of open world games, I either put... This I, is the I, true question. Yeah, so I go for the completionist aspect, and then I either stop playing it because it's too much, or I keep playing it because I enjoy it. So which ones have you kept playing because you enjoy, and what's a couple examples of too much? Uh, so early Assassin's Creed games I really enjoyed, like Brotherhood. Um, was that three? Yeah, that was the third. Technically, the third one. Yeah. yeah. So two and Brotherhood, I really went super completionist on those. Um, like I think I'm mi- missing one achievement on the Xbox for Assassin's Creed Two, and like wow, one achievement for Brotherhood. Two, so, two is the the favorite child. Yeah, two's for, good. For Brotherhood's me. my favorite. Origins is the best. The new one that just came out. That is. Is that the one that has that cool museum mode where you can? Yeah, kind of, yeah. That's such yeah, an interesting idea. Sweet. Yeah, because it's super accurate Egypt. Like it's crazy yeah. how it's way cool. It's super to me, fun. to me, that is uh, th- that's the game news that I love seeing in my feed because that was so interesting. Because I didn't play it, but I saw that um, they were so historically uh, detail oriented that they made a mode in that game. This is for people who don't know, obviously. Yeah. But they made a mode in that game where you can just explore. And kind of see... Yeah, it's just education. The story turns off, like, the combat turns off. You just explore and learn about the different, like... Like, you walk to the Sphinx, and it, like, tells you about the Sphinx and everything, and it's it's really cool. Super neat. Is that a VR thing? No. No, it's not. It should be. That'd be freaking awesome. But that probably would have taken a lot of time, because that game is massive. But that one was one that really hooked me, and I was like, I have to do everything. Uh, Witcher 3 was one that I gave up on. I know that a lot of people are going to be like, why? That game's amazing. And it well, is amazing and massive. I love it. But I didn't love the combat and the story was good, but it was kind of slow starting. Yeah, It's like reading and Lord of the Rings. There's a certain ring of people that will and the rest are comfortable with the movies. Yeah, I'm totally fine with the movies in that regard. Right. Um, but yeah, so that one was tough for me. Uh, God, there's so many. Red Dead Redemption 1. Yeah. Grand Theft Auto 5. That's, <laughs> GTA that's 4 cool, is though. one I got super completionist with. Uh, the cats are getting energetic. So um, so when you play games, like because that's a good peek into your uh, like um, open world approach to things, which is, I think says a lot about a gamer. Um, what type of uh, like general RPG trait would you give yourself? Like, Are you more of a warrior are you a rogue like your world of warcraft knowledge should help you guide the class variation there but like what kind of traditional because i i'm a tank i like being like a defensive knight a melee hand-to-hand in the action type of combat that's my preference i'm I'm all over the place man um i know my number one stat is always charisma because i like to talk myself out of situations very cool so i lean towards the rogue like every dragon age game i've been a rogue um, oh, r- rogues generally and stories are charismatic. Yeah, yeah. I always lean towards rogues. Like when I read books and like you know the the high fantasy books, there's always the elf rogue. I always very cool. Kind of 
uh, lean towards that that type of character. Usually female, because you know why not? Yeah. <laughs> so if you were, because um, you're a huge Ready Player One fan. Yeah. Huge, right? Yes, I love that book. That's my. I'd say it's my favorite because I'm not a hard reader, so it's not like it's a massive list for me to sift through. But that book made such an impression on me because uh, my first brain was like a more. Uh, thought out version of like a sword art online we were starting to get these ideas of people being stuck in virtual mmorpg spaces but then like ready player one was as if the internet was virtual yeah. reality rather than just that so like who who would your avatar be like a elfish rogue would yeah you know, probably would you be a, a football guy <laughs> no no i'd probably be like a like a, a rogue elf chick most definitely, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And I totally trick dudes. <laughs> <laughs> Trolling guys. Yeah. <laughs> Ganking noobs. Yeah. Um, what? So what was your... You you were a fan of Ready Player One, the movie, when that came out. I right? loved that movie. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, because you heard my approach, which was like extremely low that yeah. first day. And then day two, I flipped and was like, I get it. Yeah. Because I watched it twice. I just thought it was a perfect adaptation adaptation of the right content from the book yeah i thought they took the right things and got them on screen like they missed a lot but i think they got the important parts on the screen and did it well definitely and it's a fun ass movie to watch man like it was dense. when when a fucking gundam jumps out of serenity <laughs> soul <laughs> this is so cool and they're man. fighting like godzilla right Dude, i saw or no they're are they fighting godzilla i yeah. saw ruby yeah. From Rooster Teeth, yeah, like yeah. Ruby. There's so I mean, many that different is, things. That is such a niche, cool thing, you know? Like, I, oh man, yeah. Yeah. And that's what great. what you kind of convinced me of in the first discussion, because as I said, I was such a, a book elitist yeah. for a day that I just, because I was thinking of the dark elements didn't really get brought, but at the same time they did, but visually speaking, they emphasized the the energy of the world. Like yeah. They were showing off the Oasis as a whole um, because if you have a movie, I mean, that's what you should do is paint the picture. Exactly. And then you can interpret the uh, the smaller aspects of the storyline at will. You have, you have more uh, interpreting to do for the characters. Like, my favorite part of the book is the whole, uh, I think it's the third key with the whole Rush 2112 yeah. castle. I fucking love that part. The part's amazing. That would have been so boring in movie form. Oh, yeah. In, like, book form, reading that and then just knowing that song and going, like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Dude. But to put that on screen, you would have been like, seriously? I'm going to sit here for two and a half hours and this is what Dude, we're doing I, right now? It was, <laughs> that's why it's so dense on screen. There's so much to digest. And it's, it's awesome. I mean, that <laughs> the, the middle key, super dope. Yeah, the whole um, Shining section was the, amazing. The first key, which was uh, uh, very cinematic. Yeah, that was the one that upset a lot of people, was the, the race. Yeah. But again, I mean, can you have two people playing Joust and make it look entertaining? Right. Like, you know, right. you have to you have to think about this as a movie. It was a fun adaptation. And not as a book. Yeah, that's, you, that's how it Because you weren't really it. given a lot of specifics as far as, like, time frames. Uh -huh. You just got told what the idea was. Yeah. So all that's what I mean. Like, all the interpreting is there to be done. Um, they just gave you just enough to show you the story while existing in this insane world. Yeah, super fun. So my favorite part about that book is the the future dystopia VR scape that he paints, right? Because mm -hmm. it seems like a really literal translation of what could happen. Um, even in the interviews, they were talking about it like future speak or something like that. I can't remember exactly what term they used. But it's so understandable based on what we know of how we behave on the internet to just add a 3d um world around it like what do you think as a as a regular vr user we can actually expect in like even a couple decades like what do you think is going to happen with that re re like in real life because the Ernest klein version is believable I mean, I think we're kind of already going that way. You have stuff like VR Chat, which I don't know if you've experienced VR Chat, but only, that place is only a nightmare donkey hellscape. videos of it. The place is a nightmare <laughs> hellscape. Um, but that's you know that's what happens when you know let people build their own. Out. It's basically the oasis in its baby, baby, baby form. Yeah, you know. So and that's that's and kind that's of, what I mean. It seems so believable. Yeah, like we're we're not far from that. Like I mean, this last year during the NBA playoffs, you could watch NBA games courtside in VR from your phone. 
Yeah. Like, why pay $100 for a ticket, or at that point, probably $1,000 for a ticket, when I can literally just watch it on my phone in right. VR? You know? What do you think the literal translation to, like, ex- uh, the, the practicality is going to be? Because the smartphone... Um, pulled on the internet in a way that was genius because it put all of the information in our pocket. Mm -hmm. How do you comfortably put something on your face and have it be that practical? I mean, they already kind of tried that with Google Glasses. Is that still going on? I I think it kind of died out. Because that that idea, like if if my, you know, your sunglasses could eventually go that route. Augmented reality. Yeah, yeah. But even then, it's, you still, like, even look at, you could still have it on there and it could still be, you know, you're not augmenting. You could still be virtual with it. Right. As long as it, you know, it's contact a, lenses and things like that. You like could do some weird, or. crazy shit with it. Because you know that it's not a matter of uh, technical prowess. That exists right now for these ideas to be realistic. It's it's the the cell phone approach, making it into a service plan that is so common, wanted, and widespread that it becomes like a... Like, nowadays, a cell phone's a resource, just yeah. like a car or electricity. It's, it's not, can you make it? It's, can you make it practical and right. affordable? Right. Because you can make anything, but if nobody can afford it and it's not practical, then what's the yeah. fucking point? That's why video games are such a fascinating industry to follow, because you get to see the practicality. Like, really, it's a transparent uh, uh, industry, and so you get to see everything they're doing, and we watch projects fail all the time that are great ideas. Yeah, yeah. Normally from Xbox. So but... <laughs> do, you think, do you think I would say that it's going to be a combination of what they're doing with phones? Because I can see, for some reason, not a lot of attention as far as developing for phones goes. Um, the software that would like really make things yeah. get traction. But the the hardware seems capable. The hardware is okay on phones. Um, it's still not what you're going to get with like a PC or a PS4 as far as just... Right. Like even like an Oculus Go is a great idea, mm-hmm. but it's still not going to compete with what I can do with a PC or a Dude, PS4. Dude, I, th- I thought the Daydream apps but, were... Yeah, and I mean the Daydream is like... That was hard for me because I remember I tried your Daydream, and this was after I'd already played a ton of PSVR. Right. And the step down was just, like, insane to me. Tangible. Like, I couldn't do it. I was like, this is not fun for me. But to me... But I could see if I started there, it would have been amazing. Netflix in my own room on a massive screen with comfortable headphones because they're my choice. You know what I mean? Like, the... The the ideas were all there. Well, I I do that with my PlayStation. A lot of the times, if I want to watch a game, and Asher doesn't want to watch that game... I can put on the VR headset, turn it on, she can change the input, and I can still watch my stuff in yeah. VR, and she can watch whatever she wants to watch on TV. The tech in your house is, is <laughs> the best, man. You have the, the perfect setup of getting along with a spouse on the same couch. We do all right. I also just don't mind watching stupid shit on TV. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Oh, we talked about that, man. Yeah. I, I love bad TV. I love I love bad reality shows. Bad TV, bad food. You really, you guys, you should get Chris on this Love Island show that Asher loves. I'm telling you right now, man. Okay. It's it's British Jersey Shore, basically. You know what, Chris But they're trying is somebody, to, like, date each other and shit. Chris is somebody that won't, like, actively talk about those things, but she watched those things. You know what Fair I mean? Fair enough, yeah. Um... For sure. So, so yeah, you think, like, I don't know, do you think that the, the internet will be in VR? Do you think that it'll be a little bit more inter... Because what, I, what I'm it's, hoping... It's, where it's all leading that way. I mean, what it gets down to is is VR, the, the it's, its capabilities outside of gaming is really what's exciting about it. Right. It is the idea that I can watch a live games. sporting event in VR in my own house. Like, I could go to a game without having to go to a game. Yeah. Which... To me is great because I don't like going out to games, but yeah. I would love to be that experience of being that close and into it, you know. So, sure, like or a concert or you know an E three press conference. Seeing something that I brushed on in a recent uh, post that I did on the blog that I I grabbed the idea from somebody else um, as I was just looking around, but I was like, we're living in a uh, reactive internet space where we're reacting to everything and we want to be shown things, but I'm hoping that the next breakthrough create some more interactive space to where we're sharing moments like events and sports and things like that because I'm a big believer in the chat room. I loved old school MSN Messenger, just talking to friends through open chats throughout the night as you're doing other stuff. is really like, fun. You know, like going to a virtual movie theater and you're watching a movie right. in VR, but, but seeing you're that, there with other people. Seeing and that can... streamlined, yeah. would, you know what I mean? If you just 
push a button and you're there just like we're used to. Oh, it'll it'll get there. I mean, yeah. like, like the way I always like to tell people with uh, with VR is is we're in like the Atari stage of VR. Like as far as its yeah, that's a good its hardware it. capability and what it's doing. Like we're in the Atari stage, right? So and think about we were at Atari in 1980, and you know now 30, 40 years later, almost 40 years later, uh, we have shit that looks real. Like I mean, right. I play games of Madden sometimes, and people are like, "Are you watching a game?" I'm like, "No, I'm playing a game." Like you know, yeah. Like it's like we've gotten to that point now, just with. And that, so that took us, you know, really 30 years, if you really want to think about it. Because yeah, by 2010, we had HD that. consoles, and we were, yeah. you know, I mean, Uncharted 2 came out in 2009. And graphics were movie. another yeah. thing that are certainly throttled by the market. Exactly. Like, that people can't afford the best. Yeah, because, I mean, if everybody could avoid, uh, afford $2,000 PCs, games would be even farther along. But For sure. Yeah. Not everybody can do that. Because so. there's, there's money. We just need the investment from the general audience exactly. to yes. participate. So you give us, you know, 10 more years with VR. And, like, by 2030, we're going to be, you know, talk to me then and let's see where we're it's at. Be cool. <laughs> let's have that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe this podcast will still be going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so for you... Um, that's a, I don't know, it's really cool to think about where, you know, I mentioned MSN Messenger. That's kind of my first bigger internet experience of being connected. Mm-hmm. What was it like for you coming from, you know, uh, just right before the information age happened? Well, not information age, that's different. The, uh, the tech boom, the internet yeah. boom, the, uh, the connected era happened. <laughs> so, like, what was that like for you? I mean, we always had a computer in the house, but, like, the internet wasn't a thing. I don't think we got the internet until probably 2000. So what did you do with the computer? Played games. Yeah? Typed papers and stuff still. Okay, like, yeah. My dad had one because of work. Like, we, if my dad didn't work and do what he did, we probably wouldn't have had a computer. Because I wrote everything by hand. Yeah. And when we had the computer, we well, got yeah. the internet that same time. I mean, because we had... When I was in... I mean, we always had computers. Like, I remember, like, kindergarten, first grade, we had little Apple IIs, you know. Yeah. Play Oregon Trail and shit. So, but that's what, I mean, we used computers to work on typing and I played games, but. Yeah. Mavis Bacon. Yeah. <laughs> so we got that, uh, we got the, the internet in like 2000 and for me, all the internet was, was, um, just video games, like yeah. video game websites, Resources. chat rooms. Game like, facts. Yeah. Yeah. I used, to, I used to print those out. Dude. Yeah. Cause they took so, they, I got so it was much faster trouble. to print out uh those Cut walkthroughs the, than to look at them online the majora's mask um uh game fact guide that i printed that was like 140 pages yeah i about got murdered <laughs> my parents were not happy about that but the ink's expensive yeah yeah, like yeah it still gas. is like which is gas. super fucking weird yeah it's cheaper to get the printer yeah exactly um so it's like razors yeah. You know, it's cheaper just to buy a whole new, like, I'm thinking nice of razor going, than blades. Like, I keep hearing the same advertisers on like other the podcasts. Dollar Shave Club and Think, Harry's Razors and thinking stuff. Thinking about, like, for that, I'm good because I use an electric and I never shave uh, uh-huh. bare skin. But for, like, toothbrush, thinking yeah. about going quip, like, that just sounds very convenient. Yeah. You know, on a timer, they send every three months, they send you a head. Yeah. Some, that's, some that's ideas not, just make sense. Yeah, that's true. It's like uh, getting like the uh, you know every month Amazon delivers you a case of toilet paper. You're uh-huh. like, sweet, cool. Same thing. Yep. It's I think here. <laughs> those types of innovations are really exciting. Yeah, I also just I don't know. I'm too lazy for that. So shit. When, when did the internet become an obvious part of your life? Probably like once we got it, like 2000, 2001. Like once we got it, and I realized what it was, I was like, oh my god, this is yeah, heaven. you know, and then. You just started playing because do you remember more doing games. school reports? Yeah, that was a huge resource. Oh, being able to just that, look stuff up. Right. I mean, we still they still taught us the classic how yeah. to find stuff in the library and right. shit, which was you'll still need to use this. Now it's like no, we fucking don't. We I mean, really don't. I don't even now. need to use a computer now. I can Unless just, we have a power outage, like, then we'll just go by category. I mean, yeah, nature. There I am. Yeah, it's not it's not super hard, but. Yeah, so it was, once it became a thing, it was a thing. Like, it yeah. was never, you know. Remember that god-awful uh, startup, you know, as the uh, as you're sending the the, t- the dial tone out? Yeah. Oh, yeah. my Durr, gosh. Durr, durr. Yeah. 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 It's and then terrible. You can only be on the internet for an hour because it's going to muck up the phone line. And, yeah. 
get a phone call. And Mom, yeah. Somebody's unhappy. Yeah, that was the worst. One of two people. Yeah, so no, that was that was a good start. And then, like, I didn't really get into online gaming, though, until God, probably, like, my junior year of high school. And that's kind of That's about like, me. It was like, like Halo, I started, Halo 2. I see, and I, I didn't have an Xbox, so I had a GameCube. Again, we really didn't have much in the way of online games. Sure. Um, but uh, I played Guild Wars, the first original Guild Wars oh, on my PC. And I played super. Halo 1 on my PC, because Halo 1 PC launched, yeah. and it came with online multiplayer, which was the first ever online multiplayer for Halo. A lot of people don't know that. Right. Everybody thinks Dude, Halo G- 2, but it was actually Halo 1 PC. You know my friend Jeff. Yeah. I went to his house, and he had Guild Wars, and I was like... My jaw hit the floor. I'm like, what are you doing? Oh, I still have the original Guild Wars on my parents' house. Yeah. Yeah, I guarantee it's still sitting on the shelf. I bought the pack since, yeah, so yeah. I've got it now. I played the shit out of that. That was like my first taste of MMO. It was so But the cool. problem with that is you hit level cap really quick, and then it became all PvP-based. Right. And then I was like, okay, this isn't what I want. Right. And then WoW happened. And I was like, fuck yeah, man. Mine, mine was high <laughs> on the, yeah. the, uh, the Korean, I think. Yeah. Um, I tried to play that. Very cool. They had a fun balance between player versus player and player versus you, environment. Did you play any Terra? Yeah. Did you see that's finally on PS4 and Xbox One? Yeah. Yeah. I've I've stared at that a few times. I'm like, I used to love this game. I started playing Skyforge. Yeah. Oh yeah. Just so that's I could a make a big titted bitch on my Xbox. Did you know who? <laughs> here's my opinion of the uh, the like not what I have dumped the most time into, but my personal opinion of the best free to play game uh-huh. is Path of Exile. Because it seems completely unlocked version of an updated Diablo 2 with a Final Fantasy X uh, skill type system. Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. And uh, you know what I mean? There's no paywalls. There's no obvious, like, please do this or this. Uh-huh. Like, it's very 100% a fan-made thing that is free now on consoles, too. It's like, that, that to me is the perfect free-to-play game out there. Because the MMOs aren't. I don't I do not do much in the free-to-play world. I really don't. Like, I played Skyforge for like a day. Oh, like, after a Diablo <laughs> craze, you know, you look yeah, for something. You look for anything Diablo, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I kind of mess around with free-to-play like phone games occasionally, but even then I'm just like, I need space for podcasts, so i got to delete this right. game. <laughs> so, uh, lately, I mean, I keep on talking about like the internet of things because it's just kind of fascinating. I just took like a social media break for a minute, came back, figured a little bit out of like where I'm lying comfortably in certain areas. Like, do you have any any gripes about the connected era? Like do you think that we're getting too much stimulus and, you know, not enough slow down personal time with each other, stuff like that? I think it kinda of goes both ways. It goes with how you manage your time, you know. That's my um, conclusion. It's up to the person. Yeah, it's up to I mean, if if you, some people do spend too much time on their phones, you know. Some yeah. people can't sit and do what we've done for an hour and not look at their phones, you know. Um, some people just can't. Right. I know there's nights where me and Asher just, we, we, we both have to, like, tell ourselves, like, hey, we need to put our phones away because we just, just get stuck sure. into it. But I think overall it's good. I mean, uh, I can talk to people. Like, I have people I talk to now that I would never talk to otherwise, you know. Sure. Yeah, that's me. You know, like, I have friends that I've haven't seen in years i can still talk to on on facebook or whatever and you know with what i do for work it's nice that i can you know still talk to have a, a friendship with my coworkers mm-hmm. through the internet um because yeah, it's more we, casual we see each other like maybe three four times a year so it's like nice to sit there be able to like you know comment like keep still know what's going on in each other's lives type of stuff which is cool yeah so i think overall it's good it's effectively killed the bar debate which kind of sucks what do you mean like you know how you'd always get like the, like the bar argument um, like the argument over anything we we had them early on in my college years which was fun and like in high school like you know where you say so and so has hit more home runs of all time or whatever okay. like, no it's this person no it's this person yeah and then you get this argument and like no one really knows who's right now you can now you can just be like hold it. on it's this person yeah. so it's kind of killed that which sucks do you ever do the thing where you don't search on purpose you just try to let it come to you yeah i do that days. on my on my personal yeah i'll yeah. be like fuck i know i know this i know i know this i'm mm-hmm. like and then i'll sit there and think and then i'm like ah oh, it's gonna drive me nuts and i look it up but <laughs> seeing i'll wait like sometimes See, I'll, I'll wait like an hour maybe yeah. not that i'm relying to myself i'll wait like five minutes yeah and i'm yeah. like i'm well, it's it still because it's, it's like i do i'm the worst with uh imdb is the worst thing that ever happens to me really because i see someone in a movie i'm like what else were they in 
Yeah. I'm like, fuck, I got to know. That's a category <laughs> that I'm interested in, like, doing, but I, I'm so far away from memorizing uh, just famous people in general. Oh, it's not even... I just recognize them. Yeah. And then usually I'm wrong anyway. And I, t- I ask her, like, that's the person that she's like, no, it's not. I'm like, yes, it is. Let me prove it. Chris is And actually, then I bring it up and I'm like, nope, that's not it. You're right. Chris is way better at that than I am. That's funny. See, my thing is just knowing random... That's cool, Numbers. though. Dude, you're an optimist about, like, the connected world. Because I think that the – right now it's it's uh, it's affecting us in a really interesting, like, heavy way, you know? Like, I also try to avoid the shit, too. Like, right. Like, if I – like, if you share something on Facebook that I find to be racist or offensive or bothers me, I just mute your ass. Like, yeah. I don't even give you – like, you get, like, three chances. And after the third time, I'm just, like, muted. I don't need to see that because I've, I've filtered that stuff out of my life because right. it's nothing against those people. They have their beliefs, and that's fine. I just don't need to see it. And I'm sure that there's people that have done the same thing to me, which yeah. is fine with me. Oh, I yeah. don't care. Like, I I want people that, you know, like, there's people that I still like to engage with and we have conversations and stuff. Mm-hmm. But even then, there's some times where it just goes to a point and I'm just like, I just can't. Like, oh, I'm done. Oh, dude, yeah. You know. I, I mean, you know Rob. Um, yeah. I, I was talking with him on the phone uh, before you got here for maybe about half an hour, and he's one of the few people that can listen to a eight minute tangent and then respond to what I was actually like aiming for, you know, cause he, uh-huh. he understands my personal, like I, I want to uh-huh. know the person type mind frame that I'm, that I'm coming at. And, uh, and online it's nice when those people latch on to certain like little things that you do. Cause that's uh, it's, it's a good, uh, it's a plus. Um, I don't think that if they don't, it's a minus. And so you just get to reach a little bit more people mm. on a level that makes more sense to you. And like you said, uh, and, and I'm learning um, post-break from social networks because they were kind of irritating me, is that if you spend the time on them and you're an active user and you use the resources there of like personalizing it, mm-hmm. unfollowing certain things, just kind of filtering that. That's why I love my it, Twitter. It, my Twitter is yeah. just catered to me. Yeah, It's video game news. And it's sports news. Twitter, occasionally, there's something political because some video game journalist decides to get political, yeah. and I just scroll past that. Twitter's my favorite. So you know, what's your what's your favorite social? Uh, so I mean, I, my most used is probably Facebook, just because I have more of a community there. People talk know? more on Facebook. Yeah, because I don't, you know, like Twitter. I have like I follow like 150 people, and I have like 55 followers. Like, yeah, you know, there's not much there for me. Right. Or on Facebook, you know, I have. 400 friends or whatever. It's just where people went. Yeah, it's just... Made more sense. Well, it's because it's where we started. I mean, the amount of people that I go back to my friends list, I'm like, oh, it must have been someone I met in college at some random party. Yeah. But, (laughs) you know, so... That's that's, that's probably my most used. I like the... I like the... I like the format of it. I like what its goal is. I just think... It's just gotten so cluttered with shit. And that's our own fault. I I appreciate And it's just a super divided world we live in right now right and so that's every that's the war zone like we're fighting a war right now on the internet like everyone's like oh we're gonna have a civil war we already have one we're fighting it out on different battlegrounds right we're using (laughs) we're using speech over for the most part violent acts there is still violent acts and stuff but for the most part it's speech and it's it's sometimes it gets really dark and really awful and it kind of sucks that's the scary part it's disappointing that's, that's why i like that you're an optimist about it because i think it's really easy to be like you know now we're hearing about a lot more negative things that do need to be heard, but it's complicated to hear them. Well, you and know, that's the hard thing, too, is everyone's like, oh, the world's so much worse now. And I'm like, really? No, it's just I public. think we just know now. Yeah. Like, I think all this shit always happened. It didn't just start happening again. I think it's better. It's just now everybody Sir, can see it, which is actually probably better because now you get called out for your shit. Yeah. Do you know why it's Like, better? if you tweeted something racist 10 years ago, people can find it and be like, yo, you probably yeah. shouldn't have done this. <laughs> yeah. But we don't have um, – we have – institutions that are set up for particular things that's why i think we're doing better because small groups of people care so much about certain things like there's an anxiety uh you know uh what do you call it off like a ther- therapist doctor's yeah. office yeah. anxiety but it's specifically for like social anxiety like right <laughs> across the street nice you know what i mean there's taekwondo right across the street so <laughs> there's all these like little shops that are actually able to thrive and do well because I think they can be public about their their ideas. Yeah, they're like you know we believe in this and it's helpful for people because this. I don't see that stuff going on as much in like the old times of knights and witches. No, you know what I mean. They were just dying. They were, or even like, in like were... the eighties, man. Like <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, like within, you, a, like within 100 years. Like, social probably didn't exist in the 80s. They probably just were like, oh, you're fine. They didn't have time for that shit. Smoke some more weed. Yeah. Oh, that's actually what they tell you to do now to get rid of your social anxiety. Right. <laughs> it's just funny, man. I don't know. It's I. It's fascinating to me, though, this connected space that we're sharing because I. it's all up to the person. I, mean, I think that big time. Yeah. It's you all can, about how you, you use control it. the content you see for the most part. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, and if you don't like the content you see, then choose not to see that content. It's not that hard. There's always a block button. Yeah. And then, you know, if you choose to see that content and engage in conversation with the people that share it, try to be freaking respectful to each other. Right. What what do you think about, like, the free mindset? Because we're all kind of, like, entitled to free content and connectivity now. Do I believe in paying for things that are services that are modernized, and I believe in, like, Netflix, Hulu. Yeah. YouTube Red, uh, I I love paying for those services because then you you don't get advertised. I subscribed for to YouTube Red just to watch Good Game, and then I loved it so much having no ads. I've just kept paying for it because yeah. I'm like I love YouTube now. And the ability to lock my phone and still have my audio come through, yeah. Which for someone who listens to podcasts through YouTube like a pleb. It's super nice to sit there and be like, oh, my phone's not going to die because yeah. my screen's on the whole day. Well, just because we have these this like spectrum of services doesn't mean that a few of them don't do everything. People just didn't conform there. Like yeah. YouTube is perfect right now. Live streams, um, personalized content, and then you can yeah. – if you, if, really if you have YouTube Red, I yeah. spend a lot of time on YouTube. Dude, I listen to Game Grumps as if it's a podcast yeah. when I subscribe to YouTube Red because it, they're they're just funny. They're all about the the conversation yeah. going places, so you can put the really, lock button. Half on. the time, it really doesn't matter what they're playing. Their right. conversation has nothing to do with the game itself. That's why you're it's there, there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, or I'm there to actually. Oh, I'm watching them play through Skyward Sword because I don't want to do it. Yeah. I know Aaron hates it as much as I do, so I'm just getting joy watching him play through that piece of disaster. I love when he criticizes <laughs> things because I feel like you get his honest take on it. Yeah, like that's I I despise that game, and I was <laughs> that's how I actually got introduced to him as I was going off on Skyward Sword at work one day. Yeah. Just going off. It was like July. And then you someone tweeted me. Started yeah. Someone started asking me about Ocarina of Time, and I started going off on that shit too. And talking about Link to the Past. Yeah. And then they're like, oh my god, have you seen this? I'm like, what? And they're like, you have to watch this video. And they showed me the video. And I was like, yeah, it sounds like me right now. Oh, like, <laughs> that's, that's the moment I was like, I like this guy. Dude, I his, like Aaron. <laughs> I, it really clicked on me that he was uh, a simplified genius. And that means that you know how to retain, restrain yourself from giving too much information. And you know just the right amount for mass appeal yeah. or like general – you know, people get it. And it helps and that Dan's he, an idiot and brings comedy well, I mean, left and even, right. Oh, yeah, before like that Like Solo Aaron, Ego Raptor, when yeah. he did Sequelitis, Mega Man X. Yeah, that's When he really did that one, one his uh, breakdown of what makes a game good by design – is a very good entry into game design because mm-hmm. then you're like, I understand this on a fundamental level, and then you can get into things that are a little bit more intricate. Like, you know, like I'm right now playing Diablo 3. That game's pretty intricately designed because it does a lot of different things, whereas Mega Man is just a top to bottom it's, it's overall all about your well-rounded skill. You're thing. just supposed yeah. to be good to be Mega Man. Right. And then know the little glitches here and there that you can exploit. Yeah. But that's about it. <laughs> yeah, Mega Man X um, is the only one I've completed. I've beaten no Mega Mans. Yeah. Never beaten. I've beaten many a Mega Man boss, but never beaten, finished a Mega Man game. Yeah. Yeah, I played a lot of, what was the first 3D one one they did? Legends? On like PS1 and N64? Uh, I don't know. I think Mega Man 64, which I think was Mega Man Legends. Yeah. I played a shit ton of that because it was just, I played a, re- a lot of really bad N64 games, man. Yeah. Like Quest 64. God, I should have bought a PS1 earlier than we did. Oh, hey, so while we're on Game Grumps, we're, we're, we got a good uh, transition going on here from flowing through topics. Fair um, enough. <laughs> I, I'm i obsessed with an idea, so I want to spend like some time and get your opinion on it because I love the way your brain works. Okay. And that is that um, I'm, I'm a pleb. I totally am a pleb through and through, you know, blue collar, don't make much money. But I'm comfortable, um, totally comfortable with where I'm at. My bills are paid, happily married, you know, all the boxes are checked. I'm just not a rich guy. Yeah. So I have a lot of free time because all my uh, bases are covered right now to think about what I want to do next. And so I've been going back and forth on 
uh, just where I'm at with myself. And something that I've thought a lot about is the internet being connected and how it's kind of altered our perception of some of these job fields and media types. So basically our hobbies in our lifetime became professional pursuits. And that's for the yeah. most part. Cosplay, video game playing on Twitch, that's just playing games, is now a professional career. So I think it altered our, our perspective of how we look at these things. So I wanted to ask you, what do you think the value of having a lifestyle is? You know, a true, passionate just list of hobbies that you're actively up on? Because that's very much you. You keep up on your sports, you're up on your games, you are so embedded within these industries that you've worked in that for as long as I've known you. You've been in a career to do with your hobbies because of your lifestyle. It, that's, I know that's thick. I know, that but, makes sense. But what do you think about f- pursuing a lifestyle before a career? I think, I think you, nailed, you, put the, you hit the nail on the head when you said, you know, um, my bills are paid. I'm happy. I got a roof over my head. I got running water. Yeah. You know, I, I never, if my car breaks down, I can usually get it fixed. You yeah. know, I'm, it sucks. Like might be eating noodles for a couple of weeks, sure. but Hey, you know, it's done. Um, I think, you know, but I by no means rich, but I think I'm rich in life. Like I, I make up for the fact that I don't have money and stuff. And by just enjoying what I have every day, Yeah, you know, and enjoying, making the most out of every day. Like, you know, today me and Asher had the morning together. So we woke up, we watched Castle, we ate pizza for breakfast because we had leftover pizza out right, in the fridge, yeah. you know? Simple, but, <laughs> so, simple, but a so, beautiful but, picture. Like I was super, I was well fed this morning and I enjoyed my day, took a little nap on the couch. Yeah. You know, it was, it's just stuff like that. It's just making the most out of, out of every day. And, and I enjoy what I do at work too. Like my work doesn't feel right. like work. Like my, when I go to work, I'm, I'm, doing my hobby i'm doing my my passion yeah so it's like and I, and I know that to be true so and that's the nice thing too is like you know you say i i have a lifestyle that's happened to just fit into my career and they've just kind of melded together well, but that, it took me a long time that, to get there that's when i see true passion turned into um paycheck though you know maybe not like the most successful but to where you're balancing both what you want and what you have and, you know, trying not to be too greedy and always wanting more, you know, like not everybody can become a, 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 a Post Malone overnight yeah. um, like he did. And and it's – well, he didn't overnight. It took a while. But, you know, but I get what you, you're saying. Like, you you can't, saying not everybody, and not everybody's cut out to be – Most – I don't think I am. Rich and famous or, <laughs> you know or even internet famous. Yeah. Well, I was reading an interesting article on ESPN yesterday yeah. um, about uh, s- social anxiety and, and – uh, depression disorders and stuff in esports athletes. Sure. And I'm like, that makes a ton of sense. Like a uh, kid at Evo lost a smash game. Um, and he had like an anxiety attack on stage. Yeah. Cause for him losing in front of that many people was like the most horrifying thing that could ever happen to him. Sure. And I'm like, I'm thinking, cause like a lot of these kids, they don't, they have those problems. There's a reason why they're good at video games. They like to stay inside and play video games. Yeah. You know. So when you put them in public places and public things like this, they don't always know how to react, which is super cool. And like, you know, we saw it with, with Overwatch League and stuff with these kids getting suspended and stuff for doing things on the internet that were considered socially unacceptable because they didn't know any better Yeah, because they had never been exposed to this kind of fame and stuff before. Right. So like not everybody's cut out for kind of unprepared for it. No. And then you get guys like, you know, Richard Sherman, who cornerback for the San Francisco 49ers, formerly of Seattle Seahawks, who, I mean, very well-spoken, social activist, all this stuff, yeah. and has no problems in front of a camera. I mean, thrives in front of the camera. Yeah. You know, and it's just it's just not everybody's made out for it, you know? Right. You, like, I look at Ninja. Ninja's a great Twitch streamer. He is. He's fantastic. He's yeah. fun to watch, even though I hate Fortnite. Um, but he, him is a, a representative of the game at this point. Is, is great for the game, because yeah. he's, he's good at what he does. He's entertaining to watch. His content is clean. You know, he's he's fun. Yeah. Um. I could never do that. One, I'm not good enough at the game. But two, I just no. I don't I don't have that kind of a personality that I that uh, that many people would be interested in me. Right. You know, like I I could get a see, good chunk of people, but I'm not. But that's not what I want either. You see, know? and you say Twitch, and that's kind of like where uh, where I got this a uh, little bit more like literal analogy for this to kind of paint a picture of exactly what I mean. I got on Twitch expecting people to automatically be aware of my existence. And yeah. it's like, 
I should have been either going there with, one, a scheduled event that I planned on kind of making a show out of, um, you know, to where I'm selling myself in a way, almost like this podcast is a scheduled recurring event of something I'm going to do on purpose. Um, but instead, I was acting like it was a hangout and then getting bummed out because nobody came to hang out. Yeah. So it was a very weird headspace to be in because you get to right in front of you, right next to you, see all these people having a good time. And then you're like, why not me? And I think that that's, that's a, a simple way of saying kind of like the... I would think that it's common on the internet for people to feel that way in general because like artists and creators now get to see the the success of well, all of these other it's artists and creators. It's so easy to create. It's so easy. I mean, it's so easy to stream. Like yeah. everyone can be a Twitch streamer. Right. Which is great. But not everyone can be famous on Twitch because then, right? you know. <laughs> See, but it's turning it into a job rather yeah. than a hobby. Because streaming is a hobby. You can definitely tell the people that do it because yeah, they're just they're, having a great time doing it. They stream once a month maybe. They'll, you know, and they're or just even, like, hey. Or even the everydayers, yeah. but they're smiling the whole time. Yeah, like they're, they're just in their zone. And they're like, you know, they get, they probably have a day job. They get home from work. They come home and they're just like, I'm going to hang out with my internet friends for a while. Yep, this is what I'm going to do. It's like, See, and that's where I want to get to, to where... Like you, passion turns profit. And it's not – I don't want grotesque profit. But, it, I mean, who wouldn't want to be paid for their uh, their sweet spot? Yeah. So I'm sitting here trying to feel out my sweet spot yeah. after not going to college and stuff. And I'm just thinking, should I be focusing so much on turning everything into a productive pursuit? Or am I going to emphasize the fact that, hey, Nate came over to my house and uh, I get to talk to my friend yeah. on purpose, which means that we're going to have a really good conversation. Exactly. You know what I mean? <laughs> and and when I shifted that way of thinking, I feel more comfortable on camera. I feel much more comfortable with this microphone with you as compared to the last time we shared one. Yeah. And, uh, and I think that was the big click was that like, you know – just because you can see it doesn't mean that the statistics are going to really push the mass it, it that way. It takes time. All yeah. of it takes time. Like, that's the hard thing is so many of the people that are super big with Twitch or YouTube or whatever is because they got in early. Right. They were trying like, They got in before it all took off. Like, Rooster Teeth is what it is because they were doing cool internet content before YouTube. Yeah. Smosh. Like, they were the biggest I mean, one I, for a long I time. I owned seasons one through five of Red vs. Blue on DVD because that was the only way to get them. Yeah. Because you had to order them from Rooster Teeth's website and they would ship them to you. Right. So, you know, that they, they were just before time. And then YouTube happens and when you're already that successful, you're guaranteed to be successful. Exactly. Because it's just mer- merging into mm-hmm. a, another avenue. Exactly. Um, and so that's the thing is like when you try to start now, you either have to do something that's never been done before, which is getting increasingly harder to do. Yeah. Or you have to, you have to do, do it well, or you have to do something that just catches fire and then hope that enough people stick around for your boring everyday yeah. stuff. See, the thing that I think is lost is the, uh, the very literal meaning of these, uh, YouTube creators. We'll use YouTube cause it's the most obvious example. Um, when they started doing their videos, almost all of them, were like I was already doing this thing, yeah, and so they put the the art before the medium, yep, and so they had an idea before the platform, and I think right now what we are commonly thinking first is like, oh, I'm on YouTube, the platform, yeah, I could become a platformer, a youtuber, you know what I mean, but there's no, you don't have the art before the thing, so yep. like what I was uh, talking to Rob about earlier was the fact that I want to use this podcast, my blog, and the YouTube channel to balance all of those avenues and figure out what it is that I do enjoy doing so that maybe someday I can get to finding my own niche. Yeah. Because I'm such a general appreciator of such a broad stroke of subjects that I don't feel like I'm keen on anything specific. Well, that's the hard, too, is, is if you don't specialize anywhere, too, it's hard. Like, See, and I don't you even, have to give somebody a reason to go to you type yeah. of thing, you know? See, and I don't even think I necessarily mean that yeah i mean i'm not trying to be up my own ass about this but genuinely this is self-discovery this is fun yeah that's you know, cool. like what do i need to do to feel really good about a conversation with a friend and i'm like well record rather, it and put rather, it on the internet <laughs> record it put it on the internet no but it's this is a direct sharing you can testify yeah of my life yeah right like i try to chase people down and talk to them all day yeah pretty long. much yeah you've been doing that for like ever 
I, how many times have I just called you and been like, hey, man, I got this idea? Yeah, too often. That's all good, though. <laughs> I like when you call me with your ideas. Yeah. And it I reminds want... me I still have friends. Yeah. <laughs> well, then I, I, want, I want the lifestyle. It's like, well, if I enjoy all of these things on this level, what am I doing to create my own personalized content? And for a long time, it was, well, thinking about it. Yeah. You know, so it's, this, is, this is just fun. And me, I just enjoy my stuff. I think that you're uh, you're an enjoyable dude, though. Like you do things like grown up kickball. Yeah. Which I wanted to point out on this, even though we talked about it a yeah. little bit. Why did where did you get the idea of going to grown up kickball? So my old one of my old bosses or coworkers at GameStop hit me up and was like, "Hey, we need a guy and a girl for a kickball league. Are you in?" And I was like, "Asher, do you want to play kickball?" And she was like, "Fuck yeah." I was like, "All right, let's play kickball." So <laughs> that, so it's just yeah. somebody just brought it up. Yep, just it, friend text me and asked if he wanted to play and I knew they were out there. Like I knew the leagues were out there and stuff. Yeah. Um and so it's it's fun for me cuz like I still I love doing that. Like I still want to play like slow pitch softball and stuff. Problem is is I my shoulder's so up i can't throw anymore right so <laughs> so you do enjoy the casual yeah, side like i of enjoy playing sports to yeah do it. I, I get a little bit and i'm try. i try not to get competitive like because i was this ultra competitive kid growing up yeah. and even like in early college years with intramurals and stuff i get ultra competitive and with this i'm trying very hard not to and i do a pretty good job but sometimes like the other team just pisses me off because they're taking it way too seriously well, that's still sports and i'm like why the fuck are you guys taking this so seriously i'm out here trying to have fun because yeah. you're taking this seriously and then you're then like i have you to serious. take it serious exactly <laughs> then i'm like then i have to somewhat take this seriously so we don't lose 35 to nothing oh that's funny <laughs> like i just want to have fun yeah <laughs> but you do like you you to me seem like somebody that finds yourself into those fun little social groups like often do you think it's just because you put yourself out there like you were in a you were in a fraternity you were in a, a social job space for a long time doing retail it's like you've always been kind of in a position to to get to know a lot of people right yeah yeah and i always just do a good job of just acclimating to my environment um and i also enjoy talking to people um especially when you get a couple drinks in me that i can't shut up so yeah. <laughs> you know alcohol is the social lubricant of the world i used to have so, parties every weekend yep. just to get it out yeah yep. so um that's there's always been that but like i've always been part of groups like whether it was sports teams or you know, school clubs or whatever. I was always yeah. involved in that. Um, that's actually, I've actually enjoyed the last few months where I've been able to be a little bit more of a, of a loner. And, yeah. You know, well, it's probably a just, nice change of pace. Well, it makes going out more fun. Cause now I go out like once every th two, three months, you know, and it's mm -hmm. like, Oh, that was fun, but it's not like every weekend anymore. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. And I also just, I, I have internet friends that I can talk to and it's the, the same thing for me. Right. You know, so like you, for me, like it's cool like to come over here and hang out, but if we were playing destiny online and just chatting, it'd be the same exact thing. Right. <laughs> no, I, I agree. I, I, one of my favorite things is, uh, it, me and my coworker talked about this, not like maybe a month ago, but, uh, just coming home and not doing anything, having no plans. That's, yep. that's very much what my morning was today. Um, kind of like what you were describing with pizza breakfast and hanging out with Bay. Like those are having no plans is is very relaxing and I mean for to an extent. Like you need to have plans and you need to yeah, put no, yourself out saying. there. You know, and if your job is pretty easy, then you need to do something about stimulating. But um, doing nothing, just sitting on the couch, having a good conversation, you know, appreciating a, a, an intricate cup of hot chocolate, like whatever it is. It's, uh, I'm a dessert guy. I, I, I love, I would love the idea of getting more into, you know, like baking or something. But Fair enough. To me right now, no, it's a lot of time. It's t baking is nice though. Cause like all you have to do, like you have to mix it. Right. Yeah. But then you just sit there for 45 minutes while it cooks. Yeah. It's like doing laundry. It's true. Like the only reason why laundry sucks is cause you have to fold it. That's it. If you didn't have to fold laundry, it'd be yeah. the greatest thing in the world. Uh, I got a new washer. Yeah. I can testify doing it's not that bad. No. Cause you put it in, you sit there, you play a couple games of Madden. Yeah. You know, your clothes are done. Then There's you're something like, oh, weird shit. about, you can I say fold no. these. You can say no to social encounters. You can be like, "Sorry, I'm doing this." It's a very easy thing to do because you're you're just waiting for the timer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. Like, sorry, I'm doing laundry and it needs to get done. Oh, yeah, I always I always got to do is tell people, "Sorry, I'm out of underwear." Yeah, 
Or he's like, okay, cool. I Got understand. It. Yeah. Universal uh, <laughs> under, understood thing. Oh man, that's so funny. Like I'm not wearing the boxers that are the emergency boxers out in public. Like right. those are those are the boxers you wear while you're doing laundry. <laughs> Dude, I remember going to a laundromat and seeing this small boy. Oh, he was God. maybe six years old. Eating cigarette butts off the ground, and I'm like, "Where is your so, mother?" I saw that's a so pregnant gross. lady smoking this morning. So, uh, always thumbs just, up. It always just makes you feel not great. It makes you feel horrible. Yeah, and you just kind of want to say something, you know but that you're like, "It's world, not my place to say anything." Oh, and the world is so stressful that she's driven to smoke. You know what I mean? It's, Maybe, su- yeah. it's such a like. It's not like she's not aware of what she's doing, and that everybody thinks it's a terrible idea. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. This is all the fucking world beat her down so bad she's having a cigarette and everybody's just like, shame on you. And yeah. she's like, another brick in the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I went to a laundromat once and never went back. Yeah? Yeah, I was like... Oh, I, I I added a loan onto an existing loan in order to avoid going to one. So I I juggle that credit union in a good way to where I can... You know, there's yeah. there are institutions out there to make you comfortable. Yeah, as long as All you, you need do it to smartly do, and don't get yeah. too carried away. Keep on top of it. Yeah. Get your food budget. You can make $10 an hour and live very comfortably. Yep. That's the truth. Just have to be smart about it. Just got to be smart about it. Nate, um, I'm going to wrap up, man. Cool. Th- thank you for joining. That's no problem. This was fun. Yeah, this was a good time. So I'm going to put you out for like a few months from now, but let's circle back in. All right, yeah. Yeah, we'll circle back. Uh, I'm trying to think. Maybe even... I don't know. I'll be free a lot during Christmas time. Oh yeah, we'll figure yeah. out. There's not a, a, a <laughs> when on when to get together. I'm gonna be on the Christmas Day episode of the Dark Grass yeah. Podcast. Holiday. <laughs> I need I need holiday music and graphics. Yep. Like Hell yeah, dude. I need to start theming. That'd be fun, right? <laughs> yep. Do it like a Halloween show. Yeah. yeah. Some seasonal there you theming. Go. Um, but yeah, thanks a lot, man. It's always super fun to talk to you. Yeah. Thanks. Super fun to talk to you too, Jake. Oh, and... Uh, uh, yeah, pimp your socials. Yeah, can you tell people my website? Uh, Darkrass.com. Yeah. H-T-T-P... S... S colon, colon... Slash slash. Uh, colon slash slash. Yeah. Darkrass.com. That's right. You can find me at Gamebraham on the tweets. Yeah, Gamebraham. Um, I'll throw a link in the description of wherever this is at. Uh, probably YouTube and SoundCloud, and then later iTunes, and I'm going to investigate some Spotify action. But that's it. Dark grasp me anywhere. Game Abraham him anywhere. <laughs> Pretty <said>. much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>